Welcome to my presentation. I'm Evgenio Cuniato, a PhD student at the Autonomous Systems Laboratory, ETA2. I would like to start this presentation with an extract of a very iconic movie, The Bicentennial Man. Why? Because this is the perfect symbol of safe interactive robotics, in my opinion. Here, we see a humanoid robot interacting with complex environment, handling objects, safely moving in clutter space and among people. The people interacting with it have no specific training and still feel safe. We have not achieved this level of autonomy yet, but where do we stand? At the beginning, there were ground robotic manipulators, safely enclosed by walls and or laser cells such that no human could get close. But over the years, technology developed incredibly, not only by the number of robot units installed, but also in the way we interface with robotic systems. Technology is becoming safer, allowing people in close contact, even collaboration with robots. However, the need for repeatable and accurate manipulation was soon met by the need to extend workspace. This way, Aerial manipulation would work. As an example, in 2010, there was one of the first works regarding aerial transportation of a pipe with an helicopter. In 2014, we moved toward more complex interaction by designing an aerial manipulator capable of turning boats. As research was mostly focused on flat multirotors, in 2020, we got one of the first examples of multi-order omnidirectional platforms with a virtually infinite workspace, both in position and orientation. Finally, the community also started looking into the interaction of humans and drones and all the safety concerns that arise from it. As the working environments become more and more cluttered with industrial or service, ground or aerial robots. A question arises, how do we protect the workers from moving objects and rotating blades? Of course, we have safety equipment, but is it enough? Can we make robots intrinsically safe? The problem was addressed in one of the latest ISO specifications, leading to the ISO TS-1506, the world's first specifications of safety requirements for collaborative robot applications. These identify four main possible interactions. Safety-rated monitoring stop, as well as speed and separation monitoring, where we have the manipulator that either stops or slows down when an operator approaches, thus keeping a safety distance. Then we have end guidance, in which the manipulator is completely passive, but then, and this is proper active interaction, we have power and force limiting, in which there is an active interaction between the manipulator and the operator. Notice how the ISO norm specifically describes a power limitation to make the interaction safer. But how should this be limited? So far, research mostly concentrated on passive systems, limiting the power generation to be zero at one. A passive system is in general described by an input U that provides energy to it, an output Y that changes thanks to that energy, but especially a dissipation term. This dissipation term makes sure that the energy of the system is always less than the amount actually introduced. This way, the system cannot self destabilize. Examples of passivity based control loads are energy shaping, in which the aerial robot emulates a mass spring damper system for energy to perform non passive actions for a limited amount of times. Although safe, these methods might be over conservative in some scenarios. Indeed, either we are limited in the actions we can perform, like pushing or pulling objects in case we are completely passive, or we might prematurely terminate the task if we run out of the extra energy budget. Instead of always enforcing passivity or assuming extra energy budgets that might be too small or too big, we propose a smart power limitation without explicit energy assumptions. In particular, 
passivity becomes a special case enforced only when a dangerous situation is detected. However, how to detect danger in the general case is not trivial. As a metric for it, we decided to employ the largest Lyapunov exponent that represents a measure of the dynamics convergence rate. For instance, for linear system, this corresponds to the biggest eigenvalue. If this is positive, the dynamics are convergent. Otherwise, they diverge. An example of how the, the largest Lyapunov exponent of a mass spring damper system can change over time when subject to disturbances is shown in this video. Here, the system starts to converge with a negative exponent. But when a temporarily divergence happens, the exponent becomes positive because of the effect of the disturbance. After the disturbance has passed, the exponent becomes negative again and the system starts converging. At this point, we impose a power limit to our system proportional to the Lyapunov exponent. If it becomes positive, that means divergence is detected and power dissipation is imposed. On the other hand, a negative exponent allows the system to generate power. Specifically, we use Kondrabari functions as a way of imposing power limitation. They allow us to create a safe invariant set in the state space, such to constrain the power to the desired limit. Furthermore, the same properties remain in case of time invariant sets, as in our case, since the power limit depends on the value of the largest diagonal exponent. Suppose we have a nominal position or force controller that provides a control input new reference to our system. This input gets filtered by the QP that tries to find the closest safe control action U to send to the robot. The power flow constraint in the optimization problem is varied over time by the largest Lyapunov exponent estimator, which has knowledge of the current position or force trajectory errors and can promptly detect divergence. We want to demonstrate the proposed safety framework through an autonomous nail extraction task. A nail robot will extract a nail from a wooden piece without knowing anything about it apart from its position. This is similar to how a human would do it, just going there with the hammer and pulling until the nail is extracted. So we do exactly the same with the drone. But just blindly pulling would make the system diverge. Luckily, our safety framework detects the divergence and promptly stops the system after the task is completed. Here you can see a real experiment. First, what happens without the safety layer? The drone pulls more and more until the nail is extracted and then diverges. However, when the safety layer is enabled, the extraction is detected and the drone is stopped. As a comparison, in the safe case, we reach a maximum speed of 0.1 meters per second before stopping, while in the unsafe case, we accelerate up to 1.5 meters before the experiment is manually aborted. Let's have an in-depth look at what happens when the nail detached from the wood. When the pulling force reached 8 newtons, the nail detached, making the LLE positive, which in turn triggered the power dissipation. This forces the control input to stop the system, despite the even increasing force reference. In conclusion, we presented a power-based safety layer, which extends standard passivity approaches. It's applicable not only to omnidirectional UAVs, but to any fully actuated system, manipulators included. Furthermore, there are many possibilities for safe human robot cooperation. Thank you for your attention.